This episode was sponsored by the WIBW channels and Bluegrass and Mistletoe, showing this December in the Break Room's Gourmet Cabaret Dinner Theater. Welcome to Talk About Topeka. I'm Chris Schultz. Today we're out here at KNI. We're going to be checking out the Hidden Treasures Mall and we're going to be speaking to their superintendent. Come on in. Well, hey, Barney, how are you doing? I'm well, how are you doing? Good, good. good. This is my friend Barney Hubert. He's the superintendent here, and he's going to be showing us all around Kay and I here today. We're right here inside the Hidden Treasures Mall. This is a great little project you have going on here. Well, thank you. We're very happy that you're interested in being here. Yeah, just glad to show the place off. Real quick for, you know, unless someone's had you know, a family member or friend who has needed the services of Kay and I, uh, a lot of people, I feel, don't know what's going on. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, maybe your elevator speech about what this place is? Sure. Uh, KNI's purpose is to support each person who lives here to have a meaningful life. And we provide services to about 150 people, most all of whom who have, have profound intellectual disabilities and co-occurring physical disabilities. And they live in 21 homes here, typically six to eight people per home. And many of them work here in the Hidden Treasures Mall and at other locations around the KNI campus and in Topeka. And we're happy to show you some of the things that they do here in the Hidden Treasures Mall. Well, we're glad to be here and glad to have you showing us off. So uh, All right. uh, let's, let's start here. So where should we begin? Okay, why don't we go down to begin at the plant shop? Okay, great. Just down the hallway here. Hello, Gardner. How are you? Hi, Joy. Hi. How, how are, are you? you? Hello. The plant shop uh, does sales of, of various types of plants, but right now for Christmas time, uh, Joy and Gardner and the folks here in the plant shop are featuring their poinsettias. And to date have sold 128 and are taking pre-orders up through December 9th. That's about our $5 plant sale. $5 plant sale, huh, Gardner? $5 plant sale. <laughs> okay. back and back. there are uh, $5 plant sale. three different <laughs> sizes of poinsettias. I think uh, the smaller pots are $3.99, and then there's a medium size that is how much? $6.99? And a large pot, 8-inch uh, pot, is $14.99. And as you can see, they uh, are, are beautiful. They're coming in well this year, and be happy to sell those to members of the public, any of whom are interested and, and uh, would like to come out here to purchase them. And you are open to the public. Really? Absolutely. Day, so. Open to the public every day, typically between about 8 a.m. and 3 o'clock in the That's afternoon. And uh, Gardner and a number of other folks work in here, and uh, Gardner is one of the people that's who lives at KNI. Blue. It's a blue. That's a pretty one, isn't it, Gardner? That's nice. Yeah. And other times of the year in the plant shop, uh, they sell wow. everything from yeah. uh, Easter roses to special flowers for Valentine's to all sorts wow. of vegetables in the summer, yeah. tomatoes, peppers, herbs, cucumbers. Uh, we have a Friday farmer's market that we're involved in, and folks from this shop and some of the other shops in the Hidden Treasures Mall go out to, it's on the campus here at k &I, Friday mornings uh, from uh, April until October, each Friday for a, a Friday farmer's market. There's other vendors who come in, but some of the vendors from here go out and participate in that, as well as just a variety of beautiful house plants and, and lots of other things. Uh, Joy and, and Gardner and the folks who work here do a great job, and and uh, would be happy to see any members of the public who want to come in. All right, so check out the plant shop here at the Hidden Treasures right. Mall. Very All good. right, thank you for having us. So the next shop we can go in is Balloon Extraordinaire. And this is Stacy and Rex. Rex works here in Balloon Extraordinaire. All right. And he's one of our, our long-term employees. And the reason Balloon Extraordinaire was started was because Rex is somebody who, he likes people, he likes balloons, and... Uh, he is somebody who just really has done a great job in Balloon Extraordinaire for many years. And Rex uses different types of adaptive equipment. He has a switch that he uses to, uh, to, to use with a helium tank to inflate the balloons. He has a, a ribbon curler, ribbon cutter, and he has just all sorts of things that he's able to do here to, to help make balloons. In fact, he made one today for one of the assistants here who had her, had her birthday over the weekend, and Rex made a nice bouquet for her and delivered it to her. And as you see, uh, lots of things for birthdays and just all the seasonal holidays, and particularly uh, Valentine's Day is a big day. Sometimes uh, Balloon Extraordinaire will do as many as a couple hundred balloon bouquets on, on Valentine's Day. Wow. And once again, we, we encourage folks, all, all members of the public, to come in and take advantage. Also do just a variety of baskets. And for the, the Christmas holiday season this year, 
uh, they have several different types of uh, basket specials that I think, is Stacy going to show those off? Yes, I am. All right. And they range in price from, is it 14 to about $47, depending right. on, on what's uh, in the baskets. All right. And uh, just something to meet everybody's needs and desires, huh, Rex? All right. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. If we were picking out a balloon bouquet, we'd say, Rex, is this color a good color with this balloon, right? You got to pick out which colors to go with the by answering yes or no. There's your switch. You ready? Am I ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Okay, go ahead. You're doing a good job. I don't think that's full enough. They fire us. There you go. A little bit more. Don't cheat them on helium. Come on, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. Okay, don't make it pop. <laughs> okay, Rex. <laughs> Red ribbon okay, Rex? Or black? Red? Yeah. Okay. I will say, Chris, that the prices here are wonderful. The mm -hmm. the pro the quality is is wonderful. I've seen balloons that have come from Balloon Extraordinaire that have uh, just stayed afloat for a, a very long time, and uh, a bouquet with a, a mylar and with uh, three of the uh, latex balloons is seven seventy five. Seven seventy five. So Not just a, a great price, and you can get them with candy weight or a sand weight. The candy weight adds a little bit of price to them, and and. Uh, the, the folks here at Balloon Extraordinaire have done weddings, any number of special events, and are, are always happy to do that, and uh, you know, are just here to, to serve the public and would love to see more members of the public coming in to take advantage of the, the products that are available here. And our staff do some very creative things with everything from uh, uh, toilet paper sculptures or toilet paper roll sculptures, is that what they're called, Stacy? Actually, diaper cakes is the most fun thing. Okay. Um, and that's a three-tier diaper cake that we decorate for a baby shower. Okay, so just all sorts of products like that. And, but the big, big mainstay is balloons and, and just a variety of baskets. Very and, good. Uh, very good. Well, Rex, nice job. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right. Yeah. And Rex has said that if, if you have time, he'd be happy to show you his bedroom a little bit later. Oh, great, so. great. We'll come back and see you, okay? Yeah. Does that sound like right. a deal? All right. yeah, we'll look at the good. other shops and then come back and maybe head down to your place, Rex, okay? Yeah. Very All good. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. All right. All right, so the oldies but goodies thrift store is That's next, correct. Right? Uh -huh. All right, let's check it out. All right. Hello, Jean. How are you? How are you doing? I'm doing good. Good. Um, this is the oldies but goodies thrift store, and everything in here has been donated by members of the public. So the folks at K&I help with sorting, with cleaning, with pricing, shelving, uh, making sure that all the things that we're selling here are just in great shape and are uh, things that uh, will be attractive to the public when they come in to buy things. And we just never know what we're going to get. Sometimes we get some real treasures. Uh, sometimes it's uh, everything from clothing to knickknacks to sometimes appliances and sometimes uh, you know, home furnishings. So uh, just have a, a variety of things and obviously get some, some uh, holiday decorations from time to time that people are absolutely welcome to come in and, and, uh, and, and avail themselves of and, and purchase here. And the prices, again, are, are great. Sometimes people will call us and say, we've got these things that we think would be saleable that we're not going to uh, take the time to sell. And, and our staff will come sort them out and make sure that they're in good shape and get into hands that can use them. Excellent, excellent. All right. The Hidden Treasures Mall uh, was welcomed into the business community by the Topeka Chamber of Commerce in 2007 when the mall opened. Now, some of the shops have been around longer than that. The Balloon Extraordinaire used to be in a different location and has been open for, gosh, many, many years. Uh, but some of the other businesses are newer, and we opened them as we remodeled this area and moved the shops uh, into this area. And currently, in all of the stores here, there's approximately 50 of the people who live at K&I who are employed in one capacity or another in, in one of the shops here. So it's, it's one of our major sources of employment services. And the philosophy behind that is really that we want people to be involved in things that, that they can 
uh, be actively involved in. And many of the people living here, since they have uh, profound disabilities, they may be able to participate on a, a fairly limited basis. But if they're people who need help getting out of bed in the morning, getting dressed, eating, we still think they're adults and they should be involved in employment uh, to the fullest extent possible. And even sure. though they need support in, in order to be actively employed here, uh, we want them to be able to do those things. And so that's really the philosophy behind the, the mall here. Absolutely. And it's given us some flexibility. So people, many people here work maybe a two hour shift. Uh, it could be every day, it could be three days a week, but the stores are open during business hours and there's people here to support them. And, and it gives people an opportunity to, to work to an extent that's really compatible with who they are and what their interest level is. Very good, very okay. good. Uh, next shop that we'll go into is the uh, uh, t-shirts and more. The folks who work here do uh, t-shirt transfers of various sorts. They can put uh, information on everything from hats to onesies for the kids to aprons. In fact, I have one of my favorite things from here was a gift given to me that has a picture of me and it says, I put the ape in apron, which I thought was <laughs> pretty clever of the folks who put it together. They also recently have added candles to the line and, oh, wow. and make the candles here and, and sell those and uh, do shirts for ball teams and just uh, family reunions and, and whatever the occasion may be. Also have some cards and uh, it's like many of the people who work in here work as greeters so they'll greet the people when they come come in by hitting a switch or uh, in case of Doug, it looks like Doug's getting ready to do a t-shirt transfer. Is that right, Doug? Say yes. All right. Come on, Dougie. You gonna do your, do your stuff, Doug? Too busy looking at, at uh, some unusual faces, huh? <laughs> there it comes. There's the transfer. All right. And there's a, one of the finished products up there. Very good. Well, thank you, Doug. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Brian. All right. The last uh, store that we'll go into in the Hidden Treasures Mall is the Hideaway Cafe. Hi. Hello. Hi. We have here Vera. Hi, Vera. Hi. How are you? Hi. Good. Good to see you. And Becky. Hi. And Becky's our coordinator for su the Supported Employment Program, and Vera is one of our supported employees. And Vera, in the Hideaway Cafe, she also works in the in t-shirt the shop and more, but she's uh, a greeter here in the cafe. And in the Hideaway, uh, have snacks and drinks available all the time and ice cream and things like that. But each day, uh, we offer an entree. And so today, it was chicken tenders Great. and uh, everything from uh, homemade soup sometimes to chicken tenders to... Uh, chili dogs to uh, oh, the occasional meatloaf and things like that. And again, uh, open to the public and it's something that we don't have a centralized food service on the K&I campus. Uh, most people, there's a kitchen in each home so people eat in their homes. Okay. But this is a nice place. I know I dropped in today for lunch and, and uh, many of our staff, it's a, a place they can come in and, and get something to eat, it's get a snack convenient. or get a meal at lunch. So yeah, very good. it's been a nice addition, a nice pleasant environment. And the folks who work in here uh, do everything from going out and shopping for some of the products to, uh, uh, again, greeting people to, to uh, keeping things in order, cleaning and, and things like that. So it's a, a nice employment place and certainly a nice addition to the K&I campus. We all have to eat, right? We do. <laughs> yep. Some, some, of us, some of us more than others. But, uh, definitely something that uh, I think we all, all need and enjoy. And again, have a, a nice uh, uh, espresso machine, do donuts on Fridays, and, and uh, just have some special, special offerings from time to time. But uh, would always welcome anybody who comes in to shop at the other stores to drop into the hideaway and, and get a bite to eat or a snack or a drink. Uh, it's a, a, just a real pleasant place to do that and a nice, nice quiet atmosphere most of the time where you can hang out with a friend or two and, and sure. enjoy a enjoy a drink and linger a while. Very good, very right. good. It's in our habilitation services area and we have a community seating and mobility clinic that uh, people who have mobility needs can make an appointment to come in uh, to, to get the services here. Hi, this is Ken, Ken Lastman. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, I'm Chris Schultz. Hi. All right, so tell us about what you're doing here. Well, this is the K&I Seating and Mobility Center, also known commonly as the Community Seating Clinic. And what we do here is 
Uh, we have a lot of people who are in wheelchairs here at KNI, and so we've developed expertise and have a lot of uh, assessment tools that we use for the uh, uh, for the people who live here, and we've opened that up to the community. And we see, I think last year we saw over 300 people from the community. So that there's stuff that uh, we are able to do because of our uh, equipment that we have that are, that are pretty specialized. Each one of these intersections is a sensor, so there's over a thousand sensors on this map. Wow. And if you want to have a seat, okay. Oh, and this is on a hard seat pad, metal, so uh, we can uh, kind of see what's going on in action there. And uh, wow. The technical term we call this is a butt print, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, well, this is and a, there's a scale from blue to red. Uh, the the blue on the outside is the uh, lowest pressures, and the red pressures are the highest pressures. And what we use this assessment tool, since you're sitting on metal, there's there's really very little uh, pressure relief going on. Okay, sure. so now one of the things that we do is check the uh, foot plate. If you want to raise your feet up here, okay. And you can see how the pressure is suddenly being transferred. Let me take the mic pack out of my pocket here. Ah, yeah. Since yes. we're looking at my buns. There, there you go. <laughs> and so now you're starting to see some pressure on your legs. So it's not all the pressure isn't on your sure. on your rear end. And sure. now we can try different types of, this is an example of a contoured air cushion that, uh, if you can stand up, I'll sure. flip this underneath and show you the kind of difference that a, a seating cushion can make uh, that makes full contact and provides pressure relief. Go ahead and have a seat back down there. And suddenly, it's much wow. more comfortable, yeah, right? Yes. And see, now we just have a sea of blue. Uh, so all the pressures are down here. And uh, for you, this would be actually a pretty good cushion for you. Yeah. And, and you can probably uh, corroborate that by saying it's much more comfortable than a hard piece of metal. Absolutely sitting on, right? it is. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the kind of uh, assessment tool that we use for people's existing wheelchairs uh, in terms of I'm uncomfortable, what can I do to change this? Or, like I said, we have all kinds of uh, demonstrator uh, cushions that we can try people with. Well, and I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be able to say this cushion is not comfortable. Uh, but, you know, for folks who are not yes, uh, exactly. of doing that, see, this is yeah. Really a great, right. Great for tool. somebody, or let's say you had a spinal cord injury and you had no sensation, then mm -hmm. I could work with you on saying, well, how do we relieve the pressure sure. uh, by, by shifting, by raising yourself up? What would it take to uh, give you the pressure relief that you need to keep healthy? Wow. So, Very good. Well, thank, thank, you, thank you so yeah. much for, right. for you doing bet. this. Yeah. And as I said, this is one of the areas where we do community outreach. Uh, some of the other areas are in, in the other realms of assistive technology, have folks who are good at fabricating things that really help uh, people who live here have more control over their environments. And they do some work also for uh, other community members with disabilities who maybe need that sort of, of equipment and that sort of assistance. Have a group that makes uh, everything from splints to positioners and bolsters that help people who really have some uh, pretty significant physical disabilities be very comfortable and to uh, help them maintain as much comfort and as much independent functioning as possible, as much control over their environments as possible. Mm -hmm. Also do some behavior support outreach and we do some outreach in uh, uh, dental services and, and things like that. As well as just other ways that we try to contribute to the community. I mentioned the farmers market and we sure. once a month are a site for a harvester's food distribution event that is uh, sponsored by the Town and Country Christian Church. But we, we give up our campus for that. We have blood drives on a periodic basis, do things for the United Way Project Topeka and uh, just a variety of things to, to give back to the community. Because we're a, a big uh, employer in the community. There's over 400 people who work here. Wow. And we feel that the employees here and the people who live here should give back to the community to the extent they can. And so we try to do that as, as much as we can within the scope of our mission and the scope of the, the funding that's provided to us. So we stepped outside of the Wheatland building. Right. And uh, Rex is going to take us to his place. Yes, he is. All right. Rex lives in a building called Flint Hills Lodge. Okay. There are uh, currently four residential buildings at K&I and a total of 21 homes and six to eight people live in each home. Okay. And so this is Rex's room. All right, you got a nice room here, Rex. Yeah. <laughs> Rex has all sorts of stuff he likes.
with Rex, there's sort of the holy trinity of Jesus on the top. And then you got uh, Elvis and you got Barry Manilow. Yeah. As three, three people that Rex thinks a lot of. And Rex has been to see Barry Manilow, haven't you, Rex? Yeah. Yep. He's in the Barry Manilow fan club. and he's had nice these, pictures there. Yep. And, yep, there's Barry on the wall, and there's Elvis the King. Yep. You got the Lord's Prayer up there and your picture of Jesus. Yeah, and Rex has a lot of family in Texas, and so Rex is a big Texas, Texas fan too, aren't you? Yeah. But you think KU basketball is pretty good, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, those Jayhawks are all right. So Rex's family is able to make it up here to see him uh, at least once a year, it seems like. They'll, they'll connect with each other. And they were just up here a couple months ago, I guess, huh? Yeah. Three, three months ago, maybe now, yep. Are you comfortable here, Rex? Yeah. Yep. Well, we sure like having you living at K&I. You're a good guy. Again, the two-person bedrooms, uh, some of them uh, people are going to have big queen or king beds because they're people who spend a lot of time in their chairs sure. and when they get out of their chairs they need the opportunity to be comfortable and uh, you see Rex's scrapbooks over there and he's got pictures of some of the different stuff he's done and trips he's taken places he's been out to to uh, see and Rex is a very uh, you're a very religious man aren't you Rex yeah yep and that's that's important to you yeah, and family's important. Yeah. And a good worker to boot. Yeah. Yep. All right. So. Very good. Yeah, the guys in this home really, they stay busy. They're out doing stuff all over Topeka and all over the area. We think it's important for people to be out doing things in the community that they like to do. If you come in here around dinner time, Every home is going to smell a little bit different because each home has their own food budget, their own grocery budget, and, and their own vehicle. They go out and shop at community stores. Oh, cool. And so, uh, you know, Kay and I, a lot of our budget goes to those uh, community businesses and things, whether it's people shopping for clothes or going out to get their hair cut or going to, to buy their groceries or just uh, spending time doing the things that all folks in Topeka like to do, going down sure. to Topeka Tea Pack for a show or just going out for a a swim or going over to Felker to watch a ball game or whatever the case may be. And there's a, about two-thirds of the people who live at k and are able to eat by mouth. About a third uh, get their nutrition via tubes. Sure. And uh, some people there's a little bit of a little bit of both. So each home at K&I has a, a kitchen and each of them is going to look a little bit different and this one obviously dinner has just been prepared. Looks like cheeseburger and beans and deviled eggs and pineapple on the menu tonight. And uh, again, you can walk through here at dinner time, and each home's going to smell a little different because each home has its own food budget, goes out and shops for the things that the people living in that home like. You have a good evening, okay? All right, we'll see you. Thanks, see Rex. You soon, Rex. Take care. So this building, there are six homes in this building, and uh, four in the Honeybee building, six in Metal Arc, five in Cottonwood, and that's the 21 homes. In the Honeybee building, we also have our K&I medical unit, which is a, a small step up and step down from acute care hospitals. In any given year, we have uh, as many as 60 to 80 hospital admissions, and uh, people will go to the acute care hospitals in Topeka, but when they're well enough to come home but maybe need a little more nursing assistance that can be provided in their homes, they may go to a medical unit that's staffed by a, a nurse practitioner, uh, an advanced practice registered nurse as well as nursing staff 24-7 okay. and uh, we utilize that and then have a clinic where if people get sick or just need a, a physical or things like that they go see our nurse practitioner and he takes care of their medical needs. Uh, each person has a health care coordinator who's a registered nurse who uh, does some things, just checks in on their health on a regular basis and makes sure that all is going well for them. And also over there we have a dental clinic and uh, we have some specialists who come in. We have a a podiatrist who comes in periodically to, to see those people who need that services, a seizure and epilepsy clinic from Wichita that comes in, uh, an audiologist who comes in on weekends, and, and a psychiatrist who comes and does a clinic about four times a year to meet, meet those needs of the people who live here. Wow, wow. So He's lots of pro provide the comprehensive service. uh, medical services that people need and try to do that in a, a, an efficient and cost-effective way. So Barney, I just want to know, 
what would happen with this place if it didn't exist? What would happen with these people? And we've talked about in the past, you know, cutting funding for for K and I, and and whenever that comes up, you know, there's it's always such a, a heated topic. But what would happen to these people? That's what it's all about. It's about the people, right? Yes, it is, and yeah. we we certainly feel uh, very proud of the services we provide here. Uh, if K and I was no longer available, certainly nobody living here would do without services. People would get services of some sort through the community services system. Mm -hmm. But some of the specialized services that we think people uh, really benefit from, things like the Hidden Treasures Mall, things like the uh, habilitation services that you saw, the on-site medical services uh, would be provided differently and in a way that would be, uh, you know, I think based on the beliefs of the, the guardians of people living here would maybe not be provided as, as effectively as it is here. They're getting a good amount of quality of life. I mean, it seems, seems like Rex is having a good time here. Well, yeah, I, I think the people who are living here are here because uh, they and or their legal representatives want them to be here. They feel that uh, the services provided here really do an effective job of meeting their needs. And, and uh, you know, it's difficult to argue with that. We have resources that allow us to provide really comprehensive services to the people who live here. Very good. Well, I thank you so much, Barney, for well, as, thank we, you. as we wrap this up here. It's it's late at night. I don't know what you've seen in our walk, but I hope you, <laughs> okay. hope you can hear us and everything. Right. So, uh, Barney, thank you so much for having us out here. And this really has been an eye-opening experience. I, I really had no idea that you guys uh, had such a, a wonderful facility out here for folks in need. Well, thank you. And again, the businesses here are open to the public. We'd welcome people to come out at any time. And uh, we, we have a, a need for, for volunteers, have a, a, a well-developed volunteer program. If there's people who are interested in helping with uh, church or chaplaincy services or other aspects of, of the services here, uh, we would welcome people to, to uh, call and inquire about doing that. Very good, folks. Get out here and uh, and support K and I. You can do it with a little shopping. That's all you got to do. Come out and see them. 